All right, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with shadow boxing, but just footwork and head movement, okay? So no strikes yet. Step pivot, move your feet, move your head, slipping, rolling, level changes, lots of movement. Don't worry about punching or kicking your knee or anything like that. Just hands up, elbows in, weight on the inside of your big toes, lots of angles, slips, rolls, straight ducks, those kinds of things. Those of you out in the Facebook world, I've got two groups that I'm keeping an eye on, so if I'm not looking at you, that's fine. Good work. About 15 more seconds here. Got a whole crew with the, with the salsas. Crystal from Atlanta, Kevin Adolfo and Morgan from Atlanta. Yancy had trouble with the website, so she's here. Amine from Atlanta. I hope I said that right. Gentry is watching. I'm worried about what happened with our website. Sorry, guys. What's up, Brian? Virginia. John Pratt's there. Good morning, John. All right, so let's go ahead and add some upper body strikes. So put in straight punches, hook punches, uppercuts, and elbows. Still work on good footwork, head movement. Now add in upper body strikes. Straights, hooks, uppercuts, elbows. Weight on the inside of your big toes, step pivot, hands up, elbows in, chins down. Lots of movement. Shouldn't finish where you start, keep, keep busy. Morning, John. About 20 more seconds here. Ten seconds. Good time to listen. Add in upper body or lower body strikes. So we'll have up knees, in knees, round knees, curved knees, teeps to the body, and kicks to the legs. Okay? Add that into everything you're already doing. Let's get it. Slips, rolls, step pivot, straight punches, hook punches, uppercut punches, elbows, up knees, in knees, round knees, curved knees, teeps to the body, kicks to the legs. Lots of movement. Get it down. Work. We go about ten more seconds here. Good time. So let's add in some defense work, some more incidental defense work, or sorry, uh, intentional defense work. So put in parries, put in covers, put in checks, put in absorbing. Okay, so you're going to absorb some kicks, check some kicks, you can build some walls, cover punches, and parry punches. Add that to everything else that you've been doing. Let's get it. Visualize something coming back at you. Try to move after every combo you throw. Whether it's your head, your feet, some combination of the two. Nice. A few more seconds here. Good time. One more quick add, just some, some very basic uh, shadow wrestling. Uh, so we'll add in down blocks, which whichever foot is forward, I'm going to kick that foot back and touch down. And we'll add in sprawls if you have room and you're on a surface that you can do it. 
with your sprawl, if you have room, go ahead and hit a sprawl. And then when you come up out of it, hit a little quarter turn so you're going in a different direction. So down blocks here, sprawls here. Let's go. Last round of this shadow boxing pro progression. Let's go. Hips down, head up on your sprawls, feet back at angles. Come up moving. Thirty more seconds. Stay busy. Hydrate if you want. If you have gloves, go ahead and grab them. If you don't have gloves, no big deal. If you don't have a partner, no big deal. I'm going to do this with a partner and then I'll show you without. So we're going to do a few different things, um, kind of have, have fun with it a little bit. We'll start more offensive and then we're going to look at some um, kind of boxing, more driven kind of footwork and head movement. Uh, but we'll start with some face and face and misdirection kind of work. So I'm going to throw a jab here, I'm going to throw another jab here, and then I'm going to bait him and throw the cross. We're going to add some footwork to it. So when I throw my jab, I'm going to kind of step forward and to the outside just a little bit. So it's a little bit of a misdirection step in and out. So I'm going jab step here, jab step here, and then I'm showing the same thing. I'm going to leave the cross when I go. This may not be full extension. You may end up like shorthanding it a little bit. That's fine. So I'm just going one, two, and then on the third one, same step, but I'm going to lead the right hand, or, or my cross hand. So no partner, I'm here. One, two, three. Same footwork, same upper body movement, but instead of throwing the jab on the third one, I'm throwing the cross. Oh, three. Woo! You're in Facebook world and you have questions. Type them in, I'll try to get to them. Good time. seconds. Almost there. So we're going to go kind of a misdirection in the other direction now. Um, a lot of you have worked that this kind of switch jab footboard with us before. So we're going to use that as kind of our initial setup. I'm going to throw one 
two, one with a switch. So that last jab, I'm switching my feet. Um, I, I want to hide the footwork with the jab. So I want to put it pretty high kind of on his eyeballs. So we'll start with just that. One, two, one with the switch. So I'm here, I'm going one, two, one and switching my feet as I throw that last one. One, two, one, switch. One, two, one, switch. Try to make those happen at the same time. Oh, three. Woo! If you've got a partner, just run it three for three. William Horn is watching. Dave is watching at 7 a.m. where he is. Morning, folks. Twenty seconds here. Let's add to this. We're only going to do maybe one or two from here, and, and then we're going to switch it up. Um, so I'm just using this footwork, A, to get me in a better position to not take damage, but then to be able to deliver it. Okay, so I want to get in a habit of not staying right in front of somebody when I'm, when I'm working, especially in sparring where I know it may be several, three, five minute rounds. So I'd rather not stay here and make it a, a, a war of attrition. Um, there are very tough people out there and, and you, you may be able to do that but over the long haul it's not really very sustainable so you want to get in a habit of throwing and moving not staying right in front so we're going to go one two one with the switch and my next one is just going to be a front kick to the body just a teeth to the body the leg that goes back is the one that I'm kicking with one two one with the switch front kick to the body one, two, one, switch, front kick to the body. One more time. One, two, one, switch, front kick to the body. So no partner, I'm here. One, two, one, switch my feet. Same side that I left that punch on is bringing the kick. One, two, one, switch, front kick to the body. Four, three. All good, Houston. Get it. What's up, Amit? shot was through the body so that's probably where his hands are going to be so either high or low is probably what's going to be open one two one with the switch i'm going to go front kick to the body follow with my shin to his neck okay one more time or chop him with the legs all right so 
one, two, one switch. Front kick to the body, kick to the legs, or the head. One, switch, front kick to the body, kick to the leg, kick to the head. All right, one, three. Woo! If you're working with a partner on that head kick, you're gonna build a wall here. Three points of contact. One, two, three. Kick to the leg, absorb it. Turn your knee in the direction of the kick. Catch it on the front of your thigh. You're welcome, Jeff. If you have questions, let me know. Keep working. Try to get reps. So if you're working with a partner, run it three for three. I'm gonna drill down on this one a little bit more and then switch it up. Okay, time. So we're gonna go maybe one more round here. A couple of things to think about. When I go one, two, I'm already on the high line, so I'm already busy, busying him. If for some reason he, he wasn't defending the way that I wanted it, then I would probably change what I'm doing. What I'm looking for though is to throw that last one and make that stance switch and him not recognize that I switched my feet, okay? That's gonna allow me to bring that kick from the rear hand or the rear leg and then that head kick or that leg kick. We use this to set up all sorts of things. That could be an inside leg kick there, that could be an overhand here, it could be a takedown, all sorts of things, all right? It's less about what comes next and more about using that to where now I'm outside of his elbows, he doesn't have a lot of good options without squaring back up to me and I'm in position to do a lot of different things, okay? Uh, I'm gonna have Riley do this so we can look at the, the defensive side of it just a little bit. So Riley goes, one, two, one with the switch. Now that, that front kick to the body, I might hollow out, I might uh, parry it, redirect it. For now, I'm just gonna take that kick, okay? So he goes one, two, one with the switch, I'm gonna take that kick. When he goes that kick to the head, I'm building a wall, okay? So three points of contact. One from the far hand, two from the near hand, and three from the near side shoulder, okay? And ideally, we want all of those to happen at the same time because if it's one, two, three, then that's really just one. That's me absorbing everything in that one initially. So if you think about as much surface area as you can on that kick, arms and legs, th those aren't equivalent. Um, blocking like this or blocking like this is a good way to get your arm broken. So we wanna put as much on that as we can. So Riley goes one, two, one, switch, body, head, I'm building my wall this way, okay? So we're gonna look to counter off of that. One, two, one, the switch, body kick, here, bang. So when I'm here, I catch this, I'm lead side, for me is my left side loaded. I'm gonna unload, hook to the head, cross to the body. And again, this could be all sorts of things. Don't worry about what it is. Um, I just wanna get in the habit of pulling my field contact and I fire back. One, two, one, body, head, cross, or hook, cross. So I'm going here, hook, cross to the body. One more time, different angle. Here. All right. Got questions out on Facebook, type them in. Otherwise, on three. Let's get it. You good, Tom? John said, not only am I clumsy, I have just realized I'm not as flexible as I'd like. Just keep doing it, John. What's up, Allie Costner?
Good work, good work. Try to get that hook off before they get their kick back to the floor. Try to take advantage of them standing on one leg. Why do we switch feet during striking or in combination with striking? Is it more of an exercise during sparring or does it serve as a tactical maneuver? Sincere question, thank you for doing this live video. Um, it is definitely, um, I don't know if tactical is the right <laughs> word, but it, it, it's definitely intentional. I, I, I'm using it um, as a way to, to set up things from different directions. Here's the thing about sparring, especially um, when you're sparring with peers, as people get better, and if you always show them the same things and the same looks, then you become super predictable. Um, and, and, and you just kind of cancel each other out. So what you have to do is figure out different looks and different ways of showing people things so they don't know um, kind of what your tendencies are. So if I'm always fighting from an orthodox position, and I'm always throwing off on my back leg or my, my, my back hand and it's always the same kind of stuff, it's relatively easy for people to understand my timing and, and, and my tendencies and so then it becomes a lot easier for them to, to counter me. So things like stance switches, A, again the way we're doing this, the way we're doing this is, let's see if I can get the right angle. When I switch my feet, I'm not just switching my feet, but I'm also creating an angle where I get outside of his elbows. I'm no longer directly in front of him. So when I switch, I throw in this jab and I'm switching, I'm also, if Riley just throws a straight punch from there, I'm not in that place anymore. So it's not just the switching of the feet, it's the switching of the feet and the changing of the angle. And now I can throw off of either side um, with, with good efficacy. So it's a good question. Um, obviously there is some, some athleticism that's required and that helps kind of uh, build those attributes, but it, it's intentional. I'm, I'm doing something with that. I hope I answered your question. Um, man, this went fast. All right, so we're gonna look at um, some, some quick kind of footwork. I'm gonna throw, so we're changing gears, guys. I'm gonna throw a jab. As Riley jabs back, I'm gonna slip step. And the way I'm doing this is, I, in Facebook, I don't think you can see my, my feet because of the angle, but I'm stepping across and I'm taking my front foot pinky toe to my partner's front foot pinky toe. Okay, so I'm stepping this way, like this. And at the same time, I'm slipping my head a little bit to the outside. So I'm baiting the jab. I throw the jab, he jabs back, and that's my footwork. I slip my head to the outside and I'm stepping pinky toe to pinky toe. Now I'm going to pivot here. Okay, so I'm going jab, slip step, pinky toe to pinky toe. I pivot and I'm going to put my forearm on my partner. Again, different angle. Jab, slip step, pivot, control this space, take this space with your forearm. So now if he's going to square up to me, he has to go all the way around. He can't just open up his lead foot because I've taken that space. So it's jab, slip step, pinky toe to pinky toe, back foot pivots around, I'm back square to him, and I've owned this space with this forearm. All right, let's try it. One, three, woo! I hope I answered whoever had the question. You did said thank you, didn't know what word to use in lieu of tactical. <laughs> yeah, no worries. It's not a wrong word. Um, it just... The connotation. It has a certain connotation in our industry sometimes, so I don't want to confuse people. Rusty's watching. What's up, Rusty? Christopher Strickland. What's up, dude? About 20 more seconds here and then we're going to add to it. Alright time. So one more thing here and then maybe we'll do a little finisher. I don't know, let's see. 
So I throw the jab, Riley jabs back. I'm making that slip step, pinky toe to pinky toe. Now as I square up, I could still take that space with that form. Instead, as I square up, I'm gonna dig hook to the body. Boom. And then I'm gonna dig another hook to the body. Okay, so I'm going rear hook, my four, and my three. So instead of going form, one's not right or wrong, it's just different. Hammer screwdriver, okay? So jab, slip step, hook, hook. Jab, slip step, hook, hook. I'm digging rear hook, lead hook, both to the body. Jab, slip step. As I pivot, boom, boom. Okay, one's gonna come around the side, more kind of like to the kidneys, and the one's coming to the front, more kind of like to the solar plexus. If you're drilling this with a partner, be careful. Don't, don't dig your partner in the kidneys. Jab, slip step, hook, hook. William right. is asking, are you covering with the lead hand as you pivot? As I pivot. You've got the step and the slip, and then as you turn, as you pivot out, you're putting your... Am I covering here? Yeah, I think so. Mm, maybe. It depends, man. Come on. <laughs> uh, maybe. I, I, I use a lot of front shoulder work, especially if we're talking about just kind of, uh, of boxing. Um, remember, I'm not in a place, or I shouldn't be in a place where he can hit me with much of anything that matters. I... I tend to favor the front shoulder on something like this here. So when I pivot, I can still see everything. If my hand is up here, I take away a lot of vision. Even if Riley threw that right hand from here, he doesn't really have much to hit me with. He's gonna hit me with my shoulder to the top of my head. So if you wanna keep that lead hand up, you can. It's not, it's not wrong for sure. And, and probably a lot of people would say it's more right. Um, but for me, Again, if we do this more kind of close to real time here, I'm not gonna be there for him to, to hit me with anything that's gonna make much difference. So I would say, if you wanna keep it up, keep it up. If you're not keeping it up, you need to be have your, you need to have your jawline glued to your shoulder. Hope I answered that. If I didn't, that's all I got, so. He, he figured it out. Okay. Or he can see it now. We may run a couple minutes long, folks. Just FYI. Few more seconds. Mike from Japan, I will get to your question here in just a second, okay? All right, time. I wanna add one more thing to this uh, because I really wanna drill down on the movement and the idea of not staying in one place for too, too long. Um, remember the context that we're looking at here is more from kind of a, a, a combat sports context. Um, more like we touch gloves, there's a bell, and, and, and we're uh, sparring, fighting. So I go jab, I go that pinky toe to pinky toe step, square up, I'm gonna go hook, hook. Now Riley's gonna throw his right hand as he squares back up to me. I'm gonna roll that right hand, okay? When you roll here, if you wanna add hook to the body, you can finish by pivoting, okay? Again, jab, slip step. Riley squares up, he throws. I'm getting underneath that hook or that straight or overhand or whatever he ends up throwing from there, here. I end up my head on the other side of his body and then I pivot. One more time. Uh, I've got two cameras going guys and two different audiences so I'm trying to get as many angles as I can. So if you can't see something, let me know. Jab. Slip step, hook body, hook body, roll, pivot out. Oh, I, I noticed. 
So I'm here. That shot comes back. I roll underneath it here, and then I pivot again. Four, three. Woo! Just in case. A little bit, just, just in case. Can't help it. It's always cloudy with the right chance ahead. It's right there. Sylvia, the the Texas Sylvia. Oh, Sylvia okay, with a Y. Awesome. Go about twenty more seconds. And time. Okay, so. I want to address a question that I had a minute ago, um, which is kind of outside of the scope of what we were working on. So uh, the question was about dealing with a sucker punch. So here's the thing, like, if it's truly a sucker punch, you're not gonna see it. It's like, what's the defense to a two by four to the back of the head if you don't see the guy there? Um, so if it's something like a preemptive shot, the other person is, is, is going first or attempting to go first, then that's where it's, it's important. Like the same principles we were talking about here where I'm not staying directly in front of somebody, that's where that's gonna come into play. If, if I'm in a situation where I think there's, there's conflict or, or potentially could be conflict, I wanna control as many variables as possible. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm switching gears on everybody real fast just because of the question that I got, but I don't wanna just let it go. Um, if, if I'm here, right inside, so if we, if we imagine that I'm standing on train tracks and Riley is on those train tracks also, and Riley is the train, well, the best way to not get hit by the train is to move, to get off of the tracks. So if, if I'm not sure of what's going on here, or maybe I think there's potential for violence, I don't want to stay right inside of his elbows where all of his weapons are available to him and, and they're going to be most effective. So anything that I can do to kind of slightly in increase my, my positional advantage to where I'm still in position to throw something that matters and he needs to make an adjustment to hit me with something that matters. If it's truly a sucker punch, then that would be like me talking to you right now and Riley punching me over the, over the shoulder, okay? That's something that, I mean, training to take a shot, being in, in good physical condition, but there's no magic, it's not like, um, you're not Daredevil, you know, like, uh, or, or Spider-Man, you got Spidey sense or anything like that. Um, and I hate to just throw out, like, situational awareness, because that doesn't really mean anything. That's just one of those throwaway things that people say, because it doesn't, like, what does that actually mean? Yeah, pay attention to your surroundings, but guess what? People are busy, they got stuff going on, there's a lot of things happening. Um, if, if somebody's intent is to come up from behind me and, and try to take me out, they'll probably be successful more often than not. Um, and, and nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to, to admit that, but that's the truth. That's just the reality of it. So hope I answered your question. Um, we're big on making a distinction between self-protection and self-defense. Uh, self-protection is controlling as many variables on the front end as possible. Um, self-defense is I'm already being punched, I'm already being choked, I'm already being tackled, I'm already being um, whatever. Uh, where self-protection is, you know, I'm doing everything um, to kind of mitigate any of those things happening to me before the person is even able to get something off or even get into position to do that. Thanks, Sylvia, I miss you guys too. All right, I hope I answered that question. Um, I'm gonna... Yeah, yeah, he said yeah. Um, we're gonna do, I'm, I'm like way over, but I don't care, I love this, this is what I do, so. <laughs> we're gonna do a quick finisher, for those of you that want a quick finisher. What's up, Yancey and Randy? Um, so, if you have a partner, uh, I tell you what, we'll do everything with no partner. So, we're gonna go back, we started with shadow boxing, um, so we're gonna go back to the shadow boxing. But here's the thing, every time, and you're gonna have to think about this a little bit, 
every time you end with, let's say, left punch here, you're gonna throw right knee. Every time you end with right knee, you're either gonna down block or sprawl, okay? It's up to you. So if you throw one, two, three, that means a knee's coming. If you throw one, two, that means a down block's coming or a sprawl is coming. Anytime you end with your left, that means right knee. Anytime you end with your right, that means down block or sprawl. Okay, we're gonna do this for about a minute and a half. Obviously, everybody out there, I can't see if you're working hard or not, so I'm gonna assume that you're working hard. Put in, put in as much work as you wanna get out of it, all right? Make sure you've got space for your down blocks and sprawls. Ready, four, three. Get it, let's go. Dave said, it came for the drills, stayed for the no dogma answers. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Don't abandon the footwork, don't abandon the head movement. Get busy, you throw combinations, you finish by moving. Get it, Randy. Come up fast out of the sprawls and the down blocks and move. Don't come back up in the same spot if you can avoid it. Come up hitting. Got about 45 more seconds. Good work, good work. 30 seconds, come on, pick it up. More volume. Get down, get up fast, change your angle. Send something. Twenty seconds. Good work. Ten seconds. time nice job all right those of you in zoom i think amber's probably getting ready to cut y'all off so we can get ready for uh the next class those of you in facebook i'm going to stand here and talk to you yancy tom randy thank y'all yeah john I, I and and that's where you know like everybody has to to understand that that's why I, i'm not a big fan of like cookie cutter responses because everybody needs to understand what their uh, assets and their liabilities are um in order to be able to to kind of program a response um it doesn't make sense to tell everybody to fight the same way or to say well if this then that because i mean i i, I work with little kids and i work with nfl linemen and I can promise you those people are not going to fight the same way. And they shouldn't. And I shouldn't try to make them fight that way. Thanks, William. Thanks for hanging out. Doesn't drop into shoulder on still also load up. Yeah, Gentry, it does. Um, but again, it, it, the question was about dropping the shoulder on a slip to load up for the follow-up. Um, it does. It can. Uh, look, context matters. I know people get tired of hearing me say it depends. But that's just the reality. Um, I dropped a, an old video on Instagram one day this week of, of me sparring and, and hitting somebody in the body with a liver shot. And one of the comments were about my hands down. I spar with my hands down all the time, like all the time. I'm not telling anybody else to do that, um, but it works for me. And uh, if I were working with, with somebody else, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. Um, but you have to understand that there's some psychology there too. It's not just, well, I'm dropping my hands because I'm tired or I'm lazy or I don't know what I'm doing. A lot of times I'm dropping my hands because I want somebody to overcommit on the high line. I want somebody to, to think, oh, his hands are down, um, which is gonna open up other things for me. So again, it goes back to understanding your assets, your liabilities, um, knowing, understanding range and timing, um, understanding speed, all those things are gonna matter. Attributes matter. I don't care what anybody says, those things make a difference. So um, nobody's ever gotten in a fight and been like, man, I was just too fast or I was just too strong or I was just in too good a shape or whatever. That's, that's never happened and it's never going to happen. So, all right, 
I'm, I'm already like 10, 11 minutes past what I was supposed to be. So thanks everybody. Appreciate you hanging out. Um, Amber is going to say something about workshops this afternoon, probably. Uh, thanks Morgan. Thanks Houston. Um, so um, Riley is about to post the link to the seminar sign up. Riley, um, all of my devices are here and so his phone is what I use to interact a little bit. So um, if you're interested, we're doing a takedown from Clinch seminar. Ryan's doing a takedown from Clinch seminar at uh, 1.30 today, um, Eastern time, our time. So convert that to whatever you need. It's 11, 12, one, about three hours from now. Um, <laughs> So if you want to join in on that, the link is in the comments or you can go to the Fit to Fight Republic page and we've made a few posts about it. And we, you don't need a partner. Obviously, if you have a partner, it would be awesome, um, but you don't need one. I've become an expert in shadow wrestling. Um, so <laughs> you don't have to have a partner. Um, I actually think that takedowns um, without a partner are a lot easier to, to train than, than being on the ground without a partner. So if, if you don't have a partner, don't worry about it. And also, um, a, a, a primary reason that we decided to do this, and we just posted about this yesterday, was we, we've got a, a friend in Texas that uh, owns a place called Rockhold Karate, and like a lot of training centers right now are really uh, struggling because we, we can't operate. Um, so every dime that we get for this workshop is gonna go straight to those guys. Um, Chris has come out and supported us at our Hard Ready events a few times, and so if we can, can help him out, then we want to do that. Uh, we will also have a, a Facebook Live workout at noon again, um, so if you uh, want to get a workout in, probably be 30, 40 minutes, something like that, mostly intervallic kind of thing. All right. Thanks, everybody. If I don't see you again for the rest of the weekend, have a good weekend. It, hopefully, I'll see some of you at noon and then again at 1.30. Take care.